Hey there, I'm Amy from thecrazycraftlady.com. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're doing something that I realized I haven't done in a few years, and that is we're gonna decorate a Christmas tree head to toe, the whole thing. Uh, I have to thank the love and support and encouragement of my 10 year old daughter, who when the other day I said, hey honey, do you think we should put a Christmas tree in the corner of the dining room? She said, deadpan, kid you not. Yeah, mom, it looks kind of bare. So she's definitely my people. <laughs> And I hope you're my people too. Uh, I realized that when you start adding multiple Christmas trees, like we have three in the living room, we got one in the dining room, it can get very expensive very quickly when you decorate them. So we're going to do a full Christmas tree budget-friendly DIY style. So I'm going to do a custom Christmas tree color. I'm going to show you how I fill kind of the branches out with a little bit more greenery to make it look a little more full. We're going to do some ribbon, garland, and then I'm going to make all of my own Christmas tree ornaments, mostly from dollar store supplies. So this is mostly a Dollar Tree DIY. We're gonna make some jumbo oversized ornaments. We're gonna spray paint some ornaments. And then I think we may even get some wine glasses involved to make some custom bells. We have a lot to do, so let's get making. So first things first, I needed to make a tree skirt, so I pulled out a wooden crate and I quickly realized that my current tree base was too big to fit into it. This is just like a standard like crate you buy them like at the craft store or Home Depot, they're everywhere. And so I just lined it with a piece of drop cloth fabric that was left over. I do a lot of drop cloth projects, I really like the look of it. And then I put a smaller tree stand, like this is a very tiny tree stand, it's what I had uh, from a different tree, and then I just like put the base of my tree in there and it was really wobbly and so I just took some paper bricks so we have extra pavers in the yard from previous landscape projects and I just put two of the larger and then four bricks to kind of like stabilize my tree in place now this is not ideal if you have like crazy animals or children but I trust yeah I trust my dog and my kids to behave like and not knock this over um, and then I just filled in the crate with some extra burlap and some extra drop cloth fabric. I like the burlap and the drop cloth together and then just tuck in that drop cloth fabric so it's kind of hanging out over the edges but you can still see that wooden crate. Super simple. And the nice thing is it cost me zero dollars because I used all supplies that I already had on hand. And then before I even add um, decorations of any sort. I always had, I liked had greenery to like fill in my trees. So I went to Hobby Lobby and I looked at some of the garlands and luckily everything was on Christmas sale for 60% off. So I grabbed two of these little garlands that are like more frosted and a lighter green color just because my pine tree is like a darker green. So I wanted to add, um, kind of brighten it up a little bit. And so for like a seven foot tree, two garlands is like just about right. And so you just kind of like go back and forth in rows. And because my tree was in a corner, I only had to decorate the front half. Like obviously if you have to decorate all the way around, I would grab three or four garlands. And just kind of weave it back and forth in like that S pattern. And you can always kind of like move things around later, but just something to add a little extra filler to my tree. And then it was time to add ribbon. So this is just like the jute type natural fiber ribbon from Hobby Lobby. It was not holiday, it was in like the regular ribbon section with year round. And so for this, I just kind of like stuck it into the tree, looped it out a little bit and then stuck it back in the tree. And then every time I stick it in the tree, I found it easiest to twist the ribbon 180 degrees. So like stick it in, twist it 180 and then loop it out again, if that makes sense any sort of sense. And so you just start at the top of the tree and you work your way down. I found that with a roll of 30 foot, 30 feet of ribbon, I was able to do three lengths down the tree. So about 10 feet at a go, which makes sense when you're covering about seven feet as you're looping, you want about 10 feet of ribbon to get covered. So just keep looping as you go. And it doesn't have to make like a perfectly straight line down the tree. It can kind of zigzag or whatever. So I'll just speed this up.
and then added a little bit more greenery with some sprigs, greenery sprigs from Hobby Lobby. I got five of each time, kind, like one was like a frosted lamb's ear, very glittery, and the other one was like a teal colored poinsettia, which is that even like a naturally occurring poinsettia color? I don't care. Um, I just, I really like this soft, like sage green color at Christmas time. And I really wanted to keep things very neutral with like natural jute and wood elements with green and white. So I just kind of put my little, stuck my sprigs intermittently throughout my tree. So 10 sprigs, two garlands, and two rolls of ribbon. Then it was time to make ornaments. The first thing that I made were these little dollar store ornaments. I've made similar ones to these before, but for this I used these little flat circular uh, Dollar Tree clear ornaments, just cut the tags off. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is paint those toppers gold. You can leave them silver, that's fine. I just was doing more gold this year. So I just took my gilding paint, and this is like brass, antique brass color, and just grab like a scrappy old brush and do a quick coat of paint over the metal. The nice thing about this gilding paint is it dries very, very quickly. So just a quick coat on those ornament toppers and set those aside to dry and then fill your ornaments. So I just used some fake snow. I had a bag on hand from last winter. I don't use a lot of fake snow in my crafting so I feel like this bag is going to last me probably a decade which is fine. And then I just made a little funnel with a piece of paper like printer paper and start to fill your ornaments. So I would say fill the ornament maybe a quarter to a third of the way full with fake snow. It's kind of up to your own personal preference, but just kind of pour that snow in there. Give it a tap. And then Dollar Tree has these little pine pick things that are, they have a wire through the middle. So you have to use like heavy duty shears or wire cutters to cut them. But the branches are really soft and rubbery, so you can bend them and pop those right into the ornament. So all that's going in this ornament is like a little sprig of pine and some fake snow. Pretty easy, very minimal. I just think it looks super, super pretty and super classy with that gold top. Very easy. And then you could hang these with just twine, but I wanted to do a little something more substantial. So I have, this is from Michael's. It's like a very thin jute rope with a piece of metallic gold, like strand running through it. It's great when you have something that's like, oh, I could use twine on this, but I want it to look like a little more sparkly or a little more substantial. This is a great option. So just run a length through the top of the ornament, give it a simple knot and you're in business. So that was my first little DIY ornament. Next up, I grabbed some of these necklaces. They're like LED light up bulb necklaces. You don't even need the, the battery pack. So take it out of the package, cut off the battery pack, which is like kind of wasteful, but I feel like I need to like look into other sources for these light bulbs for different craft projects. But this is what I did for this project. I ended up using, I think, four strands total. So grab some black spray paint, some primer. This is like paint and primer in one. It's just what I had. And I just gave a quick coat on both sides to these light bulbs. It doesn't have to be perfect coverage, just good enough that the paint sticks that you're gonna be adding on top of your primer. The first thing that I did is I grabbed some antique gold rub and buff and a very small paintbrush. I wasn't going to use my fingertip on this because it was such a fine detail, but I just brushed and like you need the tiniest, tiniest bit of this rub and buff to cover the, just the tops of the light bulbs. So just like where like the metal screw top would be on the light bulb, you're going to paint that gold. And it doesn't even have to be perfect coverage. The nice thing about using black spray primer is that it's cool if some of like the black pokes through, it looks a little bit more rustic, a little bit more worn. And the rub and buff dries super duper fast. So by the time you are done painting all of the little tops of your light bulbs, then you can come in and paint them with the green paint. So I used DecoArt Acrylic Craft Paint Matte. 
Now this was not their chalk paint. They do make chalk paint, but for this it was just their matte acrylic craft paint in the color of Mossy Meadow. For those of you that are a fan of the Waverly chalk paint in the color Moss, I feel like this is a very comparable color. It's just not a chalk paint, it's just matte. So for this small project it worked pretty well. And so I brushed on a very, and I mean very light coat of paint onto each of the bulbs. And then once I had completely covered the bulb, I took a paper towel and I half blotted, half wiped. So it was kind of like a brushing, blotting motion with a paper towel. So just very lightly like wipe away any excess paint, kind of dab it. And the whole point is you want enough of that black to be poking through that almost the look you're going for is like an aged copper. And then if there's any like Right here I like added more green paint and the reason why is because when I spray painted it didn't cover like all of the color of the light bulb underneath. So if there's like a little bit of blue or red or yellow poking through that black, that's an area where you can just layer on more of that green paint. But it was just super easy. You just keep brushing on a very thin coat of paint and then blot away with a paper towel. And I actually just used the same section of paper towel over and over again, even though it had paint on it. So just kind of brush and blot all the way around until you have like the desired, like you can distress this as much or as little as you want. You can add as much green paint or as little green paint as you like. But I did that for all of my bulbs. And I think this is honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I think this is probably my favorite Dollar Tree Christmas craft that I've made this year. I'm pretty thrilled with how these light bulbs turned out and it is that perfect green color that I'm really loving with my Christmas greenery. Okay next up I grabbed some stemless plastic wine glasses at Dollar Tree and like bear with me this is like a pottery barn dupe. I saw three of these bells for like on sale for a hundred dollars which to me was absolute insanity. So I tried to make them myself. So I grabbed six wine glasses and I first I just cleaned them up with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. I don't know if this is totally necessary. I just wanted to give my spray paint the best chance of sticking to this plastic as possible. So just make sure that your glasses are clean. And then I grabbed these little wood rings. They were kind of like with like the macrame and the beading stuff at Hobby Lobby, I think. And I just used my miter shears. These were a lot easier to cut in half than I thought. Like it was super easy. And you just cut them in half. So you have a little semicircle, which is gonna make the perfect little hanger on top of my little wine glass bell. And so the way that I attached these was with my one-two punch super combo of E6000 and hot glue at the same time. So this is like a very small surface that you're working with. So on like one half, you do a dab of E6000 and on the other half, you do a little tiny dab of hot glue. And the reason I do this is because I'm impatient and I'm lazy. And that's because I want this to stick right away, which the hot glue does, does but I want this to also hold long-term, which the E6000 does. And by doing both of these, I can move on to my next step without waiting for the E6000 to dry. So just a tiny little dab of E6000 on each end of that little semicircle wooden ring and then a tiny little dab of hot glue and you're in business. And then I just took some white ultra matte spray paint primer in one and I gave these like a really good coat of spray paint several coats of spray paint. And because there were those little decals on the wine glasses, it actually took probably more spray paint than I had anticipated. So if you can find plastic stemless wine glasses without the decal, you'd probably be in better shape than I was. Then everything was painted and it was time to add the little like jingle ball hanger, but 
the Pottery Barn one had like a little wooden hanger. It wasn't like a bell. So I tried to recreate that. I used like a 7 16th inch wooden dowel. I used my miter shears to just cut them down to length. I found it easiest to get the cleanest cut by like you make a little score and then rotate and then you make a little score and then you rotate. You make a little score and rotate and do that six or seven times and I feel like that gives you a cleaner cut than if you just snapped it all at once. And then I went ahead and just took some plain old Dollar Tree twine, wrap it two or three times around the wooden dowel, tie it in a knot, and then secure the ends with hot glue because you don't want to risk that knot coming undone. So I just added hot glue and I add like folded the tail ends down. And then you want to set your little wooden dowel inside your cup to see like you want about, I don't know, a half inch, three quarters of an inch hanging out of the cup, like when the bell hangs. So you just kind of have to eyeball it and do your best and you may have to like do it and redo it. But just tie a few knots in that end of that twine and then add a dab of hot glue to that triple knot and then do your very best to set that hot glued knot right in the center of that wine glass. So I couldn't fit my hand into the wine glass so I had to just kind of like hang it until it touched down and then use the end of a pair of scissors to kind of press that knot into place while that hot glue dried. I'm sorry, I don't have a better way to explain it. And it was kind of chaos, but it worked out. And then I had a little hanger for my bell. And then finally I cut, because I did bunches of three bells at a time, I cut three lengths of twine. I don't know, like 12 inches, 15 inches, 18 inches. Or 12, 18, and 24 inches long, so that they're staggered lengths. And then tie a, a double or tie a regular knot and then tie another knot so there's two knots in your little twine and then you have a little hanger for your hanging belt these are super modern probably more modern than i would normally go but i like how they turned out okay next up i saw this idea on pinterest and i can't remember who did it so if someone can tell me i'd love to give credit and it was just making pine trees out of these little Row, wooden rose curls. So I'm gonna like try to make an ornament out of this. And so you just stack three little rose curls and it makes a pine tree. And I wanted a little bit more contrast on my rose curls so I just took a little bit of Waverly Antique Wax and I brushed just the tiniest bit onto the edges of those rose curls to kind of make them stand out a little bit. I just wanted more dimension between the wood and like the shaved part of the wood that was already a little bit darker, but I just wanted to make it even more dark and stand out. Totally optional, you don't have to do this part. So do that to all three of the rose curls. I'm gonna speed this up. And then Dollar Tree has these little wooden dowels that come in a 10 pack, they're very thin. Cut like a two inch section of one, just long enough to make a little tree stem and then stain that with the antique wax as well. Now it's time to hot glue the trees together. So add a bunch of hot glue in the bottom of your tree, put the wooden dowel in place, and you may have to kind of hold it in place as the hot glue dries so it doesn't go wonky in one direction or another. And then use hot glue to hot glue the three sections of your tree together and then you have this little like rose curl wooden pine tree and then to make the hanger I um, first cut a piece of just like scrap cardstock and I drew on the back of it a star with a pencil and it doesn't have to be a perfect star in fact I think this looks better if it's kind of like a more arts and craftsy looking star, like not exactly perfect, but then just take scissors and cut out your star. And then just grab a little bit of gold rub and buff and paint one side of your little paper star. 
and it seriously takes the tiniest bit. Like I put way too much. Um, it takes the tiniest bit of rub and buff. And so while that's setting aside to dry, you can make little hanging topper for the ornament. And so I just took a length of twine and I made a knot, but before I tied the knot, I stuck in a piece of faux, I think this is like faux boxwood. I always just have like random faux greenery on hand for little projects like this when I just need like a tiny little sprig, I just cut off what I need. And the reason why I did this is I thought it would be easier to tie that, or to hot glue that twine knot to the top of the tree. I thought I would have some issues getting that faux greenery to hot glue just because it's all so small. And so I just put a dab of hot glue on top of my tree and then you press the knot right into that dab of hot glue. I'm sorry I kind of got out of frame here and things got blurry, but you can kind of get the gist of what's going on there. And then on the front of the knot, on the front of the ornament, add another dab of hot glue and then put your little star in place there so you have a little star on top of your Christmas tree. I think there's something really fun about ornaments that look like Christmas trees because it's like you're decorating a Christmas tree with a Christmas tree. It's like when you take a picture in a mirror. Next up we have a craft that was from week 19 of my 25 crafts to Christmas countdown and that's these jumbo snowflakes that I got at Dollar Tree. I just ripped off the embellishments, flipped them over, and painted everything white. Uh, like I said in my tutorial for that one, I probably could have, should have spray painted this, but I really struggle with spray painting in the winter time. My previous ornaments I spray painted, but that's... Okay, I'm going to tell you a secret and please don't judge me, and that is sometimes in the winter time when I need to spray paint things, I close off one of our bathrooms, like I seal it off and make it like airtight, and then I crack a window and run a space heater and then spray paint what I need to spray paint, and I would not recommend doing that, but desperate times call for desperate measures when you live in Minnesota and do not have a heated garage. So that's, that's my life. But I painted this just with white deco art chalk paint and then I glued on just a bunch of wood beads. So these are like half wood balls. They're I think 15 millimeters. I ordered them on Amazon. I will link to it in the video description below. There will be links to all this stuff. And um, you just put a little dab of wood glue with a paintbrush on the back of each of the little half wooden balls and evenly space them on like the painted surface of your snowflake. And then you have these like jumbo snowflakes that I think are perfect for adding to your Christmas tree because I really like adding large and small ornaments. And then all that was left was for me to add all of my little DIY Dollar Tree ornaments onto my Christmas tree. So I always start biggest to smallest. So I added like the snowflakes and the bells first, and then I added the other ornaments second. I'm super excited with how this turned out. I'm really loving like the very natural, neutral shades of green with wood elements and white at Christmas time. And I feel like to a certain extent by sticking to that color theme, you can kind of get away with keeping your Christmas decorations up a little bit longer and into the winter time because it's just more evergreen that way. So for my first year with this tree, I'm pretty happy with how everything turned out. I'm sure in the coming years I'll be tweaking and adding new ornaments, but you know, year one, I, th I feel like this is a pretty solid start. So here's my quick little budget breakdown. My tree base was free because I used all supplies that I already had at home. My tree filler and ribbon set me back about $70. The garlands on sale were 20 each, uh, about 18 for my greenery sprigs and 12 for my ribbon. All of that was on sale at Hobby Lobby. P.S. Never pay full price at Hobby Lobby or any craft store for that matter because the sales are too frequent and too good to pass up. And then my DIY ornaments, my little snow globes were about 10, my string lights were about 8, the wine glass bells were the most expensive at 15 just because of the number of wine glasses and the amount of spray paint that was required. The rose curl trees were the cheapest at 7 and my snowflakes were about 10, so a total of about $50 on that. So all in all, I decorated my tree top to bottom for about $120 which I'm pretty happy with. 
I feel like had I purchased ornaments, I could have spent a whole lot more. So the key takeaway is shop sales at Hobby Lobby and make your own ornaments with Dollar Tree supplies. I do hope you enjoyed watching my creative process of decorating a whole tree come to life and all of my DIY projects. Until next time, happy making.